So in this video, we're going to be factoring quadratics from special forms. So the two forms we're going to be working on is the perfect square and difference of square trinomials. OK, so we will be using lots of square roots in this video. So quick review of expanding. So here we have 3x plus 2 all squared. So remember that little 2 means you have 2 3x plus 2 is being multiplied. So there's one 3x plus 2 being multiplied and there's the second 3x plus 2 being multiplied. Okay, so you got to remember there's two of them. So there is a common misconception with this 3x plus 2 style and then squared. Okay, so now we just FOIL or multiply binomials, right? First 3x times x is 9x squared. And then we have 3x times 2, that's a 6x. And then for the inners, we have 2x times 3, there's another 6x. OK, which makes 12 X's. You can just kind of add that up mental arithmetic. Right. And then for the lasts, that's going to be two times two is a plus four. OK, so now check it out. Where's the shortcuts on this? How can we go straight from here all the way down to here, skipping this step here? OK, well, the nine comes from three times three or three squared. What about the four? Well, the four, that's two squared right there. Now, this 12 here, sometimes that's the one that gets missed out because the nine and the Four, well, you're already thinking, well, I'm going to square things, right? Because of the two here. So this 12 here, that comes from the outers and the inners. Now they're the same, right? It's a two times three and then a three times two. Okay. So in this case here, that 12, right? That comes from the three times two or two times three, but you're going to have two of them. So you're going to double that number there. So in this case here, it's three times two doubled. Three times two is six doubled makes 12. Okay. Now we're going to multiply these two binomials here. Now notice they are the same except one's a plus, one's a minus. So here we go. Uh, multiplying binomials or FOIL. The first, 3x times 3x makes 9x squared. Now the outers, 3x times negative 2 makes a negative 6. Now the inners, 2 times 3 makes a positive 6x. So notice how these are opposite. So there's going to be no x's. 6x minus 6x makes no x's. And now the lasts, 2 times negative 2 makes minus or negative four. Okay, now let's look at the shortcut, like just going from here straight to here, right? Just take the three times three, x squared, right? Three times three is nine x squared. And then there's no middle term, right? And then for that last, that's going to be a two times negative two. It's just the lasts. Negative two squared makes minus four. And then, then like we said, there's no middle term on these ones because they end up being opposites. Now we are going to be doing these backwards. That's what this video is about. But check this out real quick. We have a square, nine x squared, nine is a square minus, right? And then another square, right? That's two squared, right? So that's a difference of squares. You're subtracting two squares. This one over here, this is a perfect square. Check it out. It's a, it's a binomial squared, right? It's a perfect square. So, so that's, that's the pattern that we're looking at for the questions in this video here. So in this video, we are going to be working with some special forms. Now, these special forms are going to have perfect squares in them. So what are perfect squares? Well, that's here's your list of perfect squares. This is right down the diagonal of your multiplication table, right? One squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, right? On and on and on. And then and then what do those equal? OK, so that's going to be one, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. And the list keeps going. So these are the numbers that we're looking at here. OK, those are your list list of perfect squares, right? So in this case here for this guy, the A and the C are from the list down here. Okay. So if they are perfect squares, then you most likely like 99% chance have a perfect square trinomial. So your answer is going to look like this, where you have a number from this list right there and a number from the same list right here. Okay. And then we do a double check just to make sure that it's correct. And we'll go over that uh, when we get to the examples, right? And now we have another uh, type here. Here. We have the AX squared minus C. And then again, A and C are both from this list here. They're both perfect squares, right? And you're subtracting them. Check this out. You're subtracting two squares. Subtracting is taking the difference of. So you're taking the difference of two squares. So your answers will look like this, right? So you're going to have from these numbers here will be here and here, here and here. And they'll repeat. It's the same numbers, except one's a plus and the other one is a negative. Okay. So that's what we're going to be going over in this video here. Before we get into actually factoring some of these quadratics, so let's just back up and learn how to identify which type, which strategy of factoring we're going to be using based on what the look of our 
quadratic is. So if you have a quadratic that looks like this, the main thing you key in on is what's in front of the x squared. In this case, there's no number in front of the x squared. You only have one x squared. So this is an a equals one style unfoiling or factoring, right? So that's where you just write, write x plus, x plus, and then these two numbers back here, they're going to multiply to six and they're going to add to a five. Boom, boom, done. Okay. Next one here. If you notice all of these coefficients, so you do have a number in front of the x squared. So a does not equal one, but all of these can all be divided by the same number. So you're going to undistribute that greatest common factor. So your next step is going to look like this, where that common factor that you undistributed is out in front. And then you keep that and then you continue unfoiling what's in the parentheses here. Okay. Next one. So this one here, this one, it's not one or two, right? We, we have a number in front of the x squared. So a doesn't equal one. And then we don't have a number that divides all of these. So that's an a doesn't equal one unfoil. Now you can do guess and check on it. You can do bottoms up on it. You can do grouping. There's a lot of different ways that you can factor this style here. Okay. Next one we have the first and the last are perfect squares. Okay. So nine is three squared, four is two squared, right? So your answer is going to look like this here, where it's at something squared. It's a binomial squared. Okay. So that this is an example of a perfect square trinomial. Now with these ones, if you're just going to guess that it's a perfect square, you do need to go back and double check. And we'll talk about that uh, later on in the video as well. And on the last one, we also have a pair of squares, right? We have a three squared here. Nine is three squared minus another square. That's going to be a two squared makes four. So we have two squares and they are being subtracted. So difference of squares, difference is being subtracted and it's two squares. We got a three squared and a two squared. So our answers are going to look like this. They're basically the same thing, except one's a plus and the other one is a minus, but we still have square root of nine, square root of four, square root of nine, square root of four. Now, the reason why we're going over these is because it's a real skill to understand which form is our quadratic in, therefore, which is going to be the best strategy for factoring quadratics in the form that they're in. So now we're going to factor 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Now, this does take the form of a perfect square trinomial. Here's the form here, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let's just break down what this means real quick, okay? So the a squared, well, that basically means you have a square up in front, right? So that's a 2 squared makes 4. And then the b squared, same idea, but in the back or your last term or the c term, right? So, so the 9, that's a 3 squared. It's a square. So there's your b squared. Now, this 2ab basically means you take the ab which is a two and a three, multiply those together and then double the two there means double it. And you get in this case a 12, right? So that's what the, the two AB means. Okay. So anytime you, you recognize that I, I have a square out in front and I square it at the end, 99% of the time, this is what the answers are going to look like. It's going to be a perfect square. Okay. So, so in this case here, right, this plus goes there. So now, now we have the square root of four it goes for your first, right? And so that's going to make a two. That's that, that's at a right there. And then for your uh, last right there, that's going to be the square root of the last. So square root of nine goes there. And that's, that's the B from the B squared is a three. And then the plus goes in the middle. So two X and then whatever symbol this is. And then the three, the square root there. And then like if you're just guessing that it's a perfect square trinomial, like you didn't even check the 2ab yet, that's easy to do at the very end here, right? You just go two times three, that's a six. So the ab, that's a six. So you go two times six. Yeah, that makes 12. So boom, there you go. So these are really straightforward. It's just square root, square root, and then copy this symbol here. As long as you've identified that this is a perfect square trinomial, right? We have a square here and a square there. And then this it follows the 2ab form, okay? All right, have you go ahead and try this one out on your own? Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. So this one is another perfect square trinomial. It takes this form here. Notice that the 25, that's a five squared. So that's a square. And then the 16, that's a four squared. So that's a square as well. Now, remember for this middle term here, you're going to take the five times the four, right? Five times four, that makes 20 and then double it. That's what the two there means, double it. And that does equal 40, the, the middle or the X term or the B term, uh, depending on how you're looking at it there. So we've identified it is a perfect square. So our answer is going to look like this. Now it's going to be an X minus right there, but perfect square means it's going to have a square there, right? So our first 
first there, that's going to be from the 25. Square root of 25 makes 5. And then 16, square root of 16, that makes a 4. And boom, you're done. It goes that fast. And again, all you're doing is identifying, okay, that's that's a square and that's a square. It, it's on the diagonal of my multiplication table. It's a number times itself. And so this is... I mean, if you're just going fast, this will be your guess. And then you just double check. Five times four is 20. Doubled makes 40. Perfect. Doom. Boom. Done. Right. And then you do have to remember that that this symbol here, if it's a plus or a minus, goes there. OK, so now let's look at difference of squares. Here we go. So notice that we have a, a four x squared. So remember four, that's a two squared. So that follows it. It's a square. And then we have a minus, right? Difference is minus, right? So we have a minus. And then the nine, that's a three squared, right? So, so there's another square there. So now all of our answers for the difference of squares is going to look like this. They're basically going to be the same, except one's a minus, one's a plus. And you can switch the minus and a plus. It really doesn't matter a whole bunch. You, you're just multiplying, right? So, so for the firsts on, on both of those, that's going to be square root of, of your a, uh, a value, right? So it's a uh, four square root of that makes a two there and a two there. And then for these two blanks here, that's going to be the, the square root of nine. So square root of nine, you're going to have a three there and a three there. And, and really that's all there is to it. You've identified, oh, I have a square minus another square. So my answer is going to look like this. And then I just do square roots for the first uh, off of there. And then the last square root of nine goes there and there and done. Because remember on these ones, right? The outers and the inners, right? It's, it's two times three makes six X. And then this minus three times two makes a minus six X. So six X minus six X, there's no X terms. So, so you're just left with no middle term here. It, it looks shorter than our normal quadratics or trinomials or whatever. Okay. So next one here, go ahead and try this one out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back and see how you did. So here we go, 25x squared minus 16. Um, it does take the difference of squares form. I have a five squared right there and then a minus and then this is a four squared here. So difference of square and then you're subtracting them difference of squares, right? So square root of 25 for the firsts. So that's going to be a, a five and a five and then square root of 16 for your lasts. That's going to be a four and a four and boom, done. And remember on these ones here, it, part of the reason why this works out is they're the same, but one's a minus, one's a plus, and it can be plus minus and, or minus plus, right? Because we're going to have a, a, for the outers, five times four is 20. And then for the inners, minus 20 X, right? So you got 20 X minus 20 X, no X's, right? So that's why there's no X term here. There's no middle term or B term, okay? So the tricky part of factoring is knowing what style of factoring you're going to end up doing. So like the ones that we just did, right? They all had squares on it. Well, check this one out. This one has a square there, but not a square there. So you're not going to use a perfect square trinomial form on this one here or strategy, right? But if you do notice on this one, uh, four divides four, four divides 20 and four divides 24, they can all be divided by the same number. So we're going to undistribute that common factor, that greatest common factor, right? So our next step is going to look like that. And then divide by four makes X squared, divide by four minus five X, divide by four makes a plus six there. And then we keep factoring, right? So now the four stays, right? And then we're going to do the two parentheses unfoil there, where the numbers here and here, those are going to multiply to a six and they're going to add to a minus five. So multiplies to a positive, they're both either positive or both negative, and then adds to a negative, they're both going to be a minus, right? So in this case here, a minus two and a minus three, right? Negative two times negative three makes positive six. And when I add them, I get a negative five. Okay. Now this one over here, right? We still have a number in front of the X squared. Um, but in this case here, seven doesn't divide the other two, or there's no number that divides all of them. Seven is prime. So that's should be a key right off the bat. So, so we know that we're going to be doing a different strategy versus this one over here. Now, in this case here, um, we can do guess and check, right? So, so we know that, that it has to be a seven X and an X because multiply the firsts multiply to a seven X squared. And then our lasts are going to multiply to a positive eight. So you can make a list if you want. Here's the list, right? You can go two and four or four and two. You can go one and eight or eight and one, right? Or you can just start guessing right off the bat, right? You just write numbers in here, erase them if they're wrong, or you can make a list kind of like this, or you can start the list and just start guessing, right? Guessing and then checking. So here'd be the check for the first one. We already know 7x times x makes x squared. And we already know that 
any of these pairs when I multiply makes an eight. So we're just checking outers and inners. So the outers, that's going to be seven X times four. So that's going to make seven times four makes 28 for the outers. And then the inners is just going to be a two. So 28 and two, that makes 30. Well, what were we hoping for? We were hoping for an 18. We were hoping for this middle term here because we're checking the outers and inners. And that's how we get our middle term there. So let's try the next one down. And again, if you just write that there and then you write your next guess right here and then check it, right? Seven times two, that's 14. And then uh, four, right? Four times one or four times X, right? So, so we have a 14 and a four. Well, that does make 18. Boom. There's our 18. So we can write that answer in there and we're done there. So that's a guess and check if you want to do that. And again, bottoms up is another really good method for doing it. Grouping is all right for this one as well. So just a quick wrap up here, we got 36 X squared plus 108 X plus 81. Notice the 36 is a perfect square. It's six squared. The 81, that's a nine squared. So we have two squares for our first and our last. So we're just going to go ahead and guess that it's a perfect square trinomial. So our answer is going to look like this. Okay. So the first, that's going to be square root of 36. That's a six goes there. Square root of 81 goes there. That's a nine. And now we just double check to make sure that it is actually that the 108 still matches, right? So we're going to take the six times nine makes 54 and then double it. And we should get 108. And in this case, yeah, we do. So boom, now we're done. Okay. Um, this one over here, difference of squares, right? 64, that's going to be an eight squared. And then the 49, that's a seven squared. So we have two squares and we are subtracting them. So that's difference of squares. Subtraction is difference. So now our answer is going to look like this. It's going to be the same pair of binomials, except one's a minus and one's a plus or vice versa. It really doesn't matter because your firsts are both going to be square root of 64, which makes eight and eight. And then the last, those are going to be square root of 49. So that's going to be a seven and a seven. So whether you do the minus first or the plus first doesn't, doesn't matter, but boom, there you go. And remember the reason why this works is because your outers and inners, right? Outers is going to be a 56 X and then the inners minus 56 X, 56 X minus 56 X, no X's. So up here, no X's. All right. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please go ahead and give it a like. If you didn't like the video, please hit the dislike button twice just to make sure.